Welcome back. This is just a short lesson to see if we really understand how Bayes' theorem applies to hypotheses, how it's a calculus of inference. And the example we're going to talk about here is what's called the Monty Hall problem or the let's make a deal problem. Uh, this is based on what was a very popular television show for some decades. It was a game show in which there's a contestant, let's suppose that you're the contestant, and a set of rules. There are three doors. Monty Hall is the host of the game, and he explains to you, the contestant, that there's a car, a prize, behind one of the doors. Uh, another door simply has a goat or some uh, not very valuable uh, prize behind it, something that you definitely don't want. Now, you pick a door, one of those three doors, but the important point is you don't get to open it yet. What happens first is that Monty, the game host, opens another one of the doors, and he never opens the door that has the car behind it. He always reveals no car. How does he manage to do this? Well, he actually knows which door the car is behind. So now you've picked a door and he's opened another door um, and Monty asks you, would you like to switch doors? There are two doors remaining. You've picked one and you could switch to the other one. Now, the question is, should you switch? Uh, and this is an interesting question because most people reason in a very straightforward way. They say, okay, uh, at the beginning of the game, the car had an equal probability of being behind any of the three doors, but I've eliminated one of the doors, or rather Monty has eliminated one of the doors by opening it. Nothing else has changed. Uh, so it shouldn't matter whether you switch or not. Uh, the door that I've picked is now, these people say, uh, a 50% probability, so I'm up from a 33% probability. Well, after the show had been on the air for many years, a columnist in Parade Magazine, which was a throwaway Sunday supplement that came with your Sunday newspaper, Everybody remember what newspapers looked like? Anyway, Marilyn Vos Savant had a column in which she billed herself as the smartest person in the world as measured by her IQ, which was 228. And she wrote a column explaining that you should always switch that the doors, the, car, the, the probability of the car was not equiprobable in this game. And she was deluged with uh, more than 10,000 letters, this was before email, uh, saying that she had to be wrong, that the uh, logic that we have here where it says most people reason was just uh, inescapable. Well, it turns out that Monty Hall, the game host, had hosted more than 4,500 episodes, and he actually understood what the truth was, at least according to a 1991 interview. And if you're into trivial aspects of this example, Monty Hall, last time I looked on Wikipedia, is still alive and is in his 90s, and an even better trivia question uh, is that his daughter is... Uh, the actress Joanna Gleason, who starred in Stephen Sondheim's Into the Woods on Broadway. None of that's relevant to this lesson, of course. Clearly, this is a good problem to apply Bayes to. There are exactly three hypotheses corresponding to which door the car is behind, one, two, or three. Now, just to uh, not have to do all the permutations of every possible 1, 2, and 3, um, we can note that without loss of generality, I'm going to write that as W log, but it means without loss of generality, we might as well um, say that you pick door 2. How can I say that? Well, imagine that the numbers haven't yet been put on the door, but after you point to whichever door you point to, somebody goes up with a piece of chalk and scrawls a 2 on it, and from now on that's going to be called door 2. And similarly, without loss of generality, uh, Monty uh, is going to open a door and we'll go up and scroll the number 3 on that, so that'll be door 3. We now want to apply Bayes' rule uh, in the usual form that the probability of a hypothesis 
given the data is proportional to the probability of the data given the hypothesis uh, times the prior probability of the hypothesis before we saw any data. So let's do it. The three hypotheses are H1, H2, and H3, and as I've drawn them here, uh, they start off as equally probable. Now let's compute um, the three probabilities uh, for H1, 2, 3 from the left-hand side of Bayes' rule. The probability of H1, given that he opens 3, that's the meaning of this cryptic O3, is the prior probability, 1 third, times the probability of the uh, data given the hypothesis. Now, if we're in hypothesis 1 so that the car is behind door 1 and you've picked door 2, then Monty is forced to open door 3. So the probability of the data given the hypothesis is 1. Uh, but what if the door is actually if the car rather is actually behind door two, which you've picked? Well, now Monty has two possible choices. He can either open door one or door three. And at least for this example, we're going to suppose that Monty has no uh, prejudice as to which of those he opens. He he flips a coin or consults a random number generator or his producer signals him through his earphones, and so he opens. Um, um, door, sorry, he opens door 3 uh, with probability 1 half, so that's the 1 half here. Uh, now, um, if the car is behind door 3, that's hypothesis 3, um, then the probability that Monty will open door 3 is 0, so we put a 0 here. Uh, now, multiply these out across each row, and you'll see we get 2 sixths here, 1 sixth here, and 0 here. Uh, the Bayes denominator would be the sum of these three terms, uh, and the probability of each hypothesis is the numerator divided by that denominator. Well, you can see right here that hypothesis 1 uh, is larger than hypothesis 2 uh, by a factor of 2. Uh, in other words, you should always switch doors in this game. It doubles your chances of winning the game. Um, so here we've seen a, a yet another example of where um, data changes the probabilities. Um, and in fact, just to underline this lesson, this is a very important example. I hope you, you master it. If you don't understand why you should always switch doors in this game, um, go back and review the previous slide. Uh, the terminology that we've heard before, uh, the probability of each hypothesis before we see any data is called the prior, and in this case it had the value one-third for all three hypotheses. The probability of the hypothesis after we've seen the data is called the posterior probability, or just the posterior. The probability of the data given the hypothesis, because that's the computable thing here. As soon as I say given the hypothesis, you have something definite that you can compute, uh, and that has a name. It's called the evidence factor, or the evidence. And what Bayes' theorem says, in essence, is that the posterior is always proportional to the prior times the evidence. And that's the end of this lesson.